Stepping out for a moment, Constable. I'll take responsibility. I'll be outside the door. Watch him. He's a vicious bastard. Attempted murder, GBH, abduction, dangerous driving, assault on a police officer. You forgot. I have no MOT. The girl, Julia Sefton, thinks you're one of them. Two of Hughes' crew are in hospital. One with a suspected fractured skull. The youngest can't be charged because it's a juvenile. They all swear the gangbang was a girl's idea, and Hugh says he'd no idea what was going on. It's a disaster. I had to save her. Will you listen? They'll get off scot-free. The only one to go to court is you. What do you want me to do? Stop and find a phone box? Call Esther bloody ransom? If one of those kids dies, it'll be murder. What if Julia Sefton testifies? Fat chance. Ha! Why didn't you tell me Ruth had been gang raped? I could have picked up Hughes there and then. Ruth swore me to silence. Besides, you'll never find the courage to testify now, and who can blame her? If Sarah and I work hard enough at it, we can maybe bring her back to some semblance of normal life. I'll have to try and hush it up. I can't see Hughes and his crew pressing charges. The girl's father's in the same lodge as a super who runs this station. He's a JP, he doesn't want a scandal. I'll do what I can. In the meantime, at least try and look as if you're sorry. And for Christ's sake, don't hit any more coppers.
I want my clocks, Duggan. Two mahogany long case. A dancer and a scrivener. The Queen Anne Boo and the Deloney Ormolu. All in the inventory of my father's estate. You'll find the identical clocks in Matilda's house. Ergo, my clocks. Mr. Gillespie, let me just recap your story. Story? Matilda wrote to you in Hong Kong in April 1961. See? informing you of the theft of the clocks and forwarding you £12,000 from the insurance money, which you accepted. About £100,000 in today's money. Weren't stolen, were they? Still in the house. The fact remains, Mr Gillespie, she offered you the equivalent of £100,000 for them and you accepted it. She cheated me as she cheated her own daughter. As she blackmailed her father and her uncle to get her hands on the estate. You or your firm probably connived in her swindles. <sighs> Mr. Gillespie, if you intend to make unfounded allegations, I must... Shut up, you little pipsqueak. Joanna actually saw Matilda smother Sir William, her own father. Read Matilda's diaries. Her diaries? <laughs> it's all in there. She can never resist writing down every sordid detail. Do you know where these diaries might be? <laughs> Disguised as a set of William Shakespeare. Top shelf in the bookcase in her drawing room. Mrs. Lassels, you must tell us where the diaries are. What do you think I've been doing, you bunch of bloody useless assholes? Yeah. The diaries should look like the works of William Shakespeare. But they'll be handwritten, and she could have put other loose covers on them. I want every single volume checked. It'll be good for your education. Carry on. This is my house! Where's my brief? Why am I still here? Rape. Conspiracy to rape. Abduction. Holding without consent. Conspiracy to hold without consent. Assault, sexual assault, theft, handling stolen goods, corruption, conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. Is that all? Sarah Langdon, Gina McNeese, Leslie James, Sally Vincent Miles, Julia Safton, currently in hospital after the little party you organised for her last night. Those are just the ones we know about. Do you deny you had sex with them? Why should I? They're all over 16. Ruth Lassell's been telling Slag. me... Slag. How exactly would you define a slag? Ruth Lassell's. And for that matter, Sarah Langdon, Gina McNeese, Leslie James, Sally Vincent Moyles, and Julia Safton. Listen, let's cut to the chase here. What those lads did in my van, that was right out of order. I had no idea. I thought they were going for fish and chips while I did my run. It's a sweet system, isn't it? You're always at arm's length on the crime. The thieving, the fencing, the rape. <laughs> I never raped anyone. Those girls, they only make chinless wonders. Limp-digged, upper-class twats. Is it my fault if they roll over and spread it at the first sight of a real man? I think we should switch this off. Interview concludes 11.45 a.m. I'd rather you didn't. Passive smoking's a killer. I don't spend 14 hours a week down the gym to have it all ruined by a vice I don't indulge in. Fair enough, I suppose. You were quite right, of course. Those slags. You could hardly be blamed. I mean, what man wouldn't when it's an offer? Anyway, that's not my case. I need to know about Matilda Gillespie's murder. 
Ruth tells me you gave her a lift there the day the old girl snuffed it. There's no crime in that, is there? None at all. <laughs> she says you told her what to steal. That's a lie. Of course. But you gave her a lift. Your van's been spotted round there several times. She had to keep in with her gran. That's what she said. I used to wait for her. We'd drive back, do the business, and then I'd get her back in time for prep. That's like homework that they do in a room together. Did you ever see anyone enter the house while you were waiting around for Ruth? No, only the cleaner. And that red-faced maniac who tried to kill me last night, he, he was in and out there all the time. If anyone did it, it was him. What about the Arlovs? Who? That's a fat old geezer with a mad wife. They were around, in their part of the garden, you know, weeding. If you did remember anyone, or anything out the ordinary, I could do you a bit of good upstairs. Well, once Ruth had asked me to pick her up from there, I waited and I waited, but she didn't come, so I um, went up the kitchen. Well, you knew your way around then. Uh, like I said, she was a slag. When no one was around, she liked to do it in the garden. Bit of an extra kick. Is that for her or for you? I thought she might have forgotten the time. I peered in through the window and suddenly I heard someone coming. Hadn't heard a car. So I dived in behind the bushes. Who was it? I couldn't see. He went to the back door and he called out Ruth, Joanna, Matilda. Then there was a scraping sound and he let himself in. What did he sound like? Old, young, posh? Old and posh. Bit short of breath, like he was unfit. And he had a key. Either that or he knew where to find one. break into my house. How did you get in? Kyle, shut up. Don't speak to me like that. Where did you get that key? Don't you touch You've that. had a key all along. I'm calling the police. Hello? This is Dr. Blakeney. Get me Sergeant Cooper, please. It's urgent. The murderer had a key. Oh, I've done something really, really stupid. What do you mean you forgot? I just did. Matilda put it there for me months ago, when her arthritis was really bad. She was frightened that in an emergency, she wouldn't be able to answer the door to me. So you picked it up and now it's got your prints on it. Very convenient. Oh, I made a mistake. You're supposed to have searched the bloody place. Don't touch anything else. I'm coming right over. Shit. Motive, method, and now? Opportunity. Oh, let's see you wriggle out of this one. What are you on? Hmm? Speed? And Valium? You're not injecting. Jack says every inch of you is flawless. Stay away from me! Your daughter needs you! She needs your love! No! <laughs> Ruth made me so ugly. For nine months I was obscene. Men turned away. She ripped me open, made me bleed for weeks. Then she screamed day and night. Nobody told me what to do with the baby. Matilda found me with a pillow. You have to understand, I was only trying to stop Ruth screaming, that was all. I needed help. 
Joanna, you've been very bad. You'll have to wear the bridle. She held it up. I had a fit. When I came to, she gave me pills. You're lucky. I had no Valium, dear. I had to manage on my own. And I did manage after that. Something the matter? No. Jane. Is it Paul? This is breathing was. The police took my fingerprints. Sergeant Cooper's coming to see me. He knows I lied. Cooper? I stole the pills for her. The barbiturates. But that is nonsense. Everybody knows that I prescribed them for Matilda. No, not now. For Lionel, years ago. I didn't know she was going to kill him. But that's no defence, is it? I'm an accessory. Jane, what are you talking about? Come sit down. Start at the beginning. Right. How do you know that the pills were used to kill Lionel? Because she boasted of it to James Gillespie. She ground them up and put them in her uncle's Horlicks. She said the only thing she regretted was that he didn't suffer. Where did Cooper find your prints? In Matilda's house. I said I hadn't been there for years, but I went to see Matilda just before she died. You see, Paul had fathered a child with Matilda, and he never knew. What? I knew the story would come out. The moment James Gillespie came back like a ghost. He's back? Oh, yes. He has no money. He was trying to get money out of Matilda. He makes me pay his rent. How can he do that? Oh, easy. By threatening to tell Paul about the baby. He knows he'll do anything to prevent that. What happened to the child? Uh, she was adopted. She'd be about your age. I told Paul nothing. I was so ashamed. He was unfaithful and you were ashamed? Because Matilda could give him the baby, I couldn't. We'll get Cooper to interview you here. Give the money away. Burn it. Anything. Don't suck Matilda's poison in, dear Sarah. Please don't. How's the roof? She's asleep. Finally. I tried ringing Joanna today. She put the phone down on me. I'll drive over there tomorrow. I have to borrow your car. They've impounded mine. And my bill. You will do no such thing. Cooper only got you out on the condition that you stay in this house and report to the police. Someone's got to make that woman see sense. Listen, darling. You are in deep shit. Just be sensible. I know it's hard. Try. I didn't sleep with Joanna. I just did the picture. I know.
Mr. James Gillespie, Detective Sergeant Cooper, police. Well? May I come in? Why? Well, I'd like to ask you some questions about your late wife. Off, lads, down below. Bottle of decent whiskey. Any plan will do. Pay you when you get back. Right, you check. wife was murdered. Thought it was suicide. You went to see her. I wanted my property back. She cheated me. Blackmailed me. Drink up. Blackmail? You've no idea what it was like in the 1950s. You bastards made our lives hell. She had photos. My own wife hired a private dick to photograph me putting my dick where it shouldn't have been. But you went to see her when you came back to England. Three times. Came back like a bad smell. She laughed at me, as she did in the old days. And she had nothing on me. I slapped her sniggering face. You hit her? Taste of her own medicine. She liked to hurt men. Put that bridle on her father. <laughs> I once caught her with Duncan Orloff, stark naked. Crawling across the floor with that thing on. <laughs> he was loving it. And she called me a pervert. Tell me about the diaries. The solicitor blabbed, didn't he? Well, what else do you expect? I gave them to her when we married. Blank pages in the brown calfskin leather. Ten volumes, it all. She's just about filled them by the time she died. An extravagant present. Especially as you hated her. That's a tragedy. I didn't hate her then. I was prepared to play her game. I would have been discreet about my tastes. In those days, you bloody stayed in the closet anyway. Nobody else was going to be a husband to her six months gone. I didn't love her, but I knew what it was to be unable to love. I wasn't always like this, you know. She ruined me. She used me and broke me. I was meant to drink myself to death in the colony. Instead, I came back, a festering zombie in her drawing room. I'll have to take a statement. Get them to send me a pretty young copper next time, in uniform. Someone to take my teeth out for. Oh, shit. Now I have pismas over here. Last night she was sobbing. <coughs> Who's this now? With Joanna, of course. I keep thinking, what if they sell the house? Dr. Sarah won't want to live there. We could have anyone living next to us. Your Anna will tie Sarah up in litigation for years. By the time it's all sorted, we'll be dead. 
At least the bloody granddaughter's gone. Doesn't scream at her all day. Well, I worry about Ruth, too, living in the same house as Jack, an artist. Don't you worry about anything? Yes, my tea's cold. I shall go round. I shall bake her some scones. She probably just needs someone to talk to. Sit down. Sit. You do no such thing, do you, Henry? Whatever happens in Cedar House has nothing to do with us. Understand? Joanna is a vicious bitch, like Matilda was a vicious bitch. They deserve all they get. You have no right to stop me. You do as I say. Well, we now have evidence that Blakeney's a violent man. Also, he was quite able to get Matilda to take off her clothes, put on the skull's bridle and get into the bath. All he had to do was say he wanted to paint her like that. No wonder there were no bruises. But why? He didn't know about the will. Nobody did. That's what he says. Look at his alibi. It's not one word of truth in it. Besides, I don't trust Sarah Blakeney. They planned this together. Number 20. My God. That's practically a murder weapon. She didn't. They didn't. I'll stake my life on it. Mm. It's not much of a bet, really. Surprised if Jack Blakeney isn't on that list as well. Show me how much you love me, Jack. I love you this much. You can hurt me if you want. Anything. she was looking for him, and Dave Hughes wouldn't have let Ruth steal something that was worthless to him. I still say the Blakeneys. Everything points at them. Gillespie didn't know anything about the key. His prints are all over the hall table and the decanter in the drawing room. There's no prints of his at the back of the house which corroborates his story that Matilda always let him in the front door. Hmm. I can see myself arresting those two. Yes. Yes. What? Don't go anywhere near him. I'll be right over. 
Jack Blakeney's just half throttled Joanna. I'll bring him in. Oh, no. I'll do it. You stay here and have your bread and butter pudding. Oh, call the station. Organise a press conference for three. I can't believe it. Coop, I have to tell you, you didn't make promotion. I did all I could, but I was outvoted. The board said you were far too emotional for an inspector. Come on. Everybody knows you're a good copper. Jack going to be all right? <laughs> Not if your mother sticks to her statement. This is all my fault. No. It's probably mine. I mess up everybody's life, not just my own. Oh, Jack's pretty good at messing up lives, believe you me. Doesn't need your help. I love him. I love him too. Like a father. I suppose. Not that he's like a father, of course. I've decided what you're going to do about the termination. You haven't got much longer, you know. I'll give evidence against Hughes, even if that means I go to prison for stealing. That's very brave. I'll find someone for you to talk to. Someone else, I mean. Uh, another colleague. I think that would be best. I mean, whatever you want, but... In the end, you have to make up your own mind about an abortion. I know. Can I be brave about one thing at a time? Oh, yes. Yes. Of course you can. Sally Benedict. Your alibi for the day Matilda was murdered. She says you never spent the night with her. I have to admit, I lied. Would you care to tell us where you were? I don't see the harm now. I went to visit Sarah's father in Cheltenham. Why? No wonder there's so much unsolved crime. You really are hopeless, aren't you? We're all ears. Matilda liked my pictures. She also liked to talk while I painted her. I don't think she'd spoken so frankly to anyone for years, not even to Sarah. She knew I couldn't be shocked. She told me about her affairs, about her sexual tastes. And she told me about the bastard daughter she'd had with Paul Merriman. What, you knew about that? Yeah. Problem was, she'd begun to believe that Sarah was the child she'd given away for adoption. I thought this was an unhealthy fantasy. And it was beginning to interfere with my painting. You didn't want to spoil the picture with a lie. Exactly. So I went to Sarah's father to find out the truth. And did you? No. Sarah's father hates me at the best of times. I tried to explain, but he kept giving me large gins. Somehow we ended up arguing about Picasso. Anyway, I resolved to have it out with Sarah and Matilda when I got back. But when I got back... Matilda was dead. So you encouraged the old girl to believe that Sarah was her daughter so she'd leave her money to her. Then you killed her. I didn't want Matilda's love for Sarah to be based on a delusion. You see... She genuinely did love Sarah. It even surprised her. For so long, love for Matilda had just been a trick that you used to get people, generally men, to do what you wanted. When Matilda saw my picture, she wept. Because you didn't just show her scars, you showed her tenderness. Something she'd always suppressed. I hope you value old Coop as much as you should. Even if I believe any of this garbage, this art criticism. 
It still doesn't explain why you tried to strangle Joanna. I wanted to scare her. You know, I thought it might make her see sense about Ruth. I couldn't stand to watch that child suffering anymore. Oh, give us a break. Also, I found out something you should have noticed weeks ago. What's that, Sherlock? Even the quietest murder could be heard in the other house. Can I speak to Mr. Howard, please? It's Dr. Sarah Blakeney. It's about the Cedar Estate. Haven't I had some already? No, dear, that was yesterday. Hmm. So confusing. You'll not leave me, will you, Duncan? Of course not. You'll feel better soon. Sergeant Cooper will be cross with me if I don't remember everything. Try not to worry about the police. I love you too much to see you upset by them. You must be quiet. You need to rest. Their questions can wait. We're quite safe here in our little house. Yes. Sex isn't everything, is it? Where are you going to get on the estate? 30. 30. They'd have been Georgian. Very tasteful, quality homes. She said she was planning to set up a trust for her daughter and needed a lot of cash. I thought I'd write to you direct. We could do a similar deal. Uh, the letter, the original letter calling off the deal, um, do you still have that? Of course, we know where everything is. I wonder, would it be possible to see that? <laughs> Janet. Dig out the Cedar Estate foil, well, there's a love, and get us a cup of tea. I like the old girl, she drove a hard bargain. But her word was all you needed on the deal. Right, let's have a look. Oh, you might like to look at that. Oh, thank you. Sergeant Cooper, please. Well, can you get a message to him? Ask him to contact Dr. Blakeney. It's urgent. Thank you. There you are. Yeah. I wonder, would you have a clean plastic bag I could put this in? I don't know. Why? There may be prints. Matilda never wrote this. She never typed a letter in her life. Tell you now. Julia Safton is defying her father. She is going to testify. Also, one of the other girls, yeah. Gina McNeese. With their testimony and your statement, we'll be able to put Hughes away for a very long time. Women can be quite brave when they're not being beaten around the head. I know. When you came to the school to question me, you said you wished your daughters had my advantages. Well, well, I only. I wish I'd had theirs. I mean, if if one of them was pregnant. Uh, oh my God. Doesn't show yet, but I have to decide. 
Sarah won't tell me what to do. She says it's my choice. Oh, that's just typical. God. You think she's wrong? I think she's a fool. To have a baby as a result of what they did to you is absurd. In a few years, when you've found a decent man who loves you, then your babies will be wanted and you'll be free to be the kind of mother you want to be. Now, with guilt over your granny's death, all this, it's absurd. And that's what you tell your daughter? It is. Look, I'm a silly old copper, if you like, but I've seen a lot of life. Life at its worst. If you can believe it, people who suffered things that make your problems look like a picnic. You can always tell who will survive and fight back. You're one of those. Life dealt you a shitty hand, but you're not like your mother. I'm sorry, but I'm saying what I think. Would you mind very much if I gave you a hug? for Matilda Gillespie's diaries. Her diaries? Did she keep a diary? I never knew that. Why did you lie to us about Ruth Lassell's being at the house the day Matilda died? You can hear everything through that wall. Did I? We have a witness who saw you entering the house using the key that's kept under the flower pot. Yet you told us categorically you hadn't been in the house for years. Must have slipped my mind. How did he get her to take the pills? You can't think I killed her. That's really too preposterous. Then why the lies? Why the forged letter to Howard and Sons? Why steal the diaries? What was in them? You knew she was going to sell the land. There'd be a housing estate in your beloved garden. Your life had become hell. My life's been hell for years. Sergeant. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I've had such a guilty conscience. I have to tell you the truth. I said that Duncan was with me, and that is what I believed. You see, I was watching the lottery, and he gave me a glass of whiskey. I'm not in the habit of taking a drink, and I must have dozed off. When he shook me awake, it, it was match of the day. I must have slept for three hours. I'm afraid that's Mother Valley I'm talking. What went on next door, Mrs. Orloff? Oh, yes. I think you'd better go and lie down, dear. You're making a spectacle of yourself. Well, Duncan only wants me to tell you bits. It's only fair to tell you everything. We wrote the anonymous letter. I'm sorry about this. Do you have a typewriter? Of course not. What would I want with a typewriter? Duncan, how can you tell such fibs? We had the old portable. The scouts came by collecting. Duncan said we didn't use it anymore. He wanted to write detective stories once, you see. Then he lost interest. The typewriter. Was it the local troop? Oh, yes. Such a well-spoken boy. He's gone to a good home, I'm sure. Where did they take it? Bosnia. You can speak to him for five minutes. Shouldn't he let you do that? Be careful. For God's sake. Sorry. This isn't a game. My father informs me that you came over raving about me being adopted. For God's sake. You don't mean you've gone mad. Then you drink a pint of gin and you bath out on the sofa where you spend the night. Why couldn't you tell the police that instead of inventing stories about Sally Benedict? Matilda had me half convinced you were her daughter. You could have just asked me. I didn't want you to be hurt. 
You didn't want to hurt me. If it was true. What's that? It to my birth certificate, you bloody idiot. You stupid, stupid man. What the hell did you think you were doing going off to Joanna's? What did you think you were going to achieve? I thought I'd be scared. Oh. I thought if I gave her a shock in my sober room, I might make her see sense about Ruth. But most of all, I couldn't stop thinking about her neck. You know, I can't finish the picture if I can't get it right. Oh. He's small like the master. Oh. I know you dislike him, but he is an excellent solicitor. If you tell him everything, just play the game. Maybe we can get you out on bail. I warn you, if he tells me what a saint you are and how you should have married him instead of me, I'll opt for the gas chamber. If he says one word about his sodding CD collection, I'll eat his liver. Shut up, shut up. If Joanna doesn't change her story, you are liable to be charged with attempted. Murder. Jack, it's not a joke. So, we're not getting a divorce then? No, good we? <laughs> Please don't cry. <laughs> I am. Mean... I'm Why are you still here? Nobody's paying you. I'm not paying you. Why are you scrubbing that table, for God's sake? First of the month, scrub the table. Robert's turning the compost. He wants everything perfect in case she comes back. Comes back? She's dead. You found the body, you idiot. Matilda's not coming back. She might. Where's that ridiculous husband of yours? I can't open the bathroom window. Turn the compost, like I said. Where is the compost heap, you imbecile? Diaries. Nothing left. There might have been fingerprints. I was three when I saw her put the pillow on her father. He was in his wheelchair by the window. She held it over his face and smiled at me. Run along, dear. Grandpa's sleeping. Understood. Still have nightmares. I've come to make a deal. Sarah is going to set up a trust for you and a trust for Ruth. But you must return to London and have treatment for your addiction. I prepared a statement. You will sign it. It says simply that you were mistaken in claiming that Jack Blakeney tried to murder you, that you both wanted sex, and that you were interrupted by Violet. You said a deal. So far, I see bugger all in it for me. I have here your little pharmacy. Ruth told me where you hide it. There's enough here for me to charge you, not just with possession, but with dealing. I've been talking to the Met. They've interviewed some of your London friends. They were not very loyal to you. 
Look, I know they found you the clients to finance your habit, but you know the law. It's you who'll be charged with soliciting. That's where we'd begin. You bastard. Your looks are all you have left now. They'll not last much longer. A spell in jail won't help. Sign this statement and you'll be comfortable for the rest of your life. This is blackmail. Give yourself a chance. I could ruin you. Why are you doing this? Oh, you're doing it for her, aren't you? You're in love with that moon-faced doctor. She'll never look at you. Not in a million years. I know. I'm gonna get washed. Can I have my property back? Not till you sign. If you don't want earth on the statement, you can wash in the kitchen sink. everything. I've told Paul everything. There's nothing left to hide. It's what we should have all done 30 years ago. Then Matilda wouldn't have been able to manipulate us with our lies. Bloody sight easier to go there than where I have been, I can tell you. Well, it's not all car chases and birds with big chest, you know. There are 322 scout troops taking part in the appeal. There are five sub-collection points. When a stuff comes in, there is an initial sort through before it's passed oh, on. Okay, okay, you're a bloody hero. You've got nice legs, too. Let's see how good your dictation is. Put a bit of paper in it. <coughs> oh, type there. Dear Mr. Howard, despite the attractiveness of your offer, hey, you can touch tight. Can't everybody? I have decided that I can no longer consider it. Yours sincerely, Matilda, with an H, Gillespie, I.E., missing. Careful. This is a valuable antique. You should know that typewriters have signatures, too. We know you wrote the letter. We also found a thumbprint of yours on the ashes of a diary. You burnt the diaries, you forged the letter, and you killed Matilda Gillespie. Violet is not strong. If there's a long trial, it would break her. And spare her. Tell us everything. If you plead guilty, it'll all be over sooner. At my age, you're not thought to have sexual feelings. Is it not passing strange that desire should so long outlive performance? Oh, I could perform. It just required a little stage management. Humiliation. I needed it. She liked to give it. 
When I was young and fit, she took some pleasure in my body. I loved her then. I still love her now. I flattered myself she wanted me near her. We would not touch. She would stay and watch me. One time there was a mantra of insults too. But even that was too much trouble now. In my heart, I suppose I knew that I was just a symbol of all the men who'd humiliated her. What I thought love was revenge. That's why she chose to tell me when I was as low as I could be. I've got a very good deal with Howard and Sons. I'm selling the garden for a housing estate. It won't be very pleasant for you and Violet, but I'm sure you'll manage. Clean up after you. You see, Violet and I could never have sex. On our honeymoon, I made the mildest suggestion. She locked herself in the bathroom and cried for two days. I didn't insist. There were prostitutes. It was a marriage. Tell us about the murder. And you better switch that thing on. D.I. Harmer, D.S. Cooper, interviewing Wednesday, the 1st of October, 1750. Duncan Jeremiah Orloff. She had said that it was going to be our last session, that she was finding it too tiring and boring. I had the barbiturates already dissolved in a hip flask. We always had a stiff drink first. Barbiturates affected her very quickly. By the time we were in the hall, she was half asleep. She didn't struggle as I put the bridle on. I carried her up the stairs to the bathroom. I got her into the bath. I left her there while I got the knife from the kitchen drawer, my little bouquet of weeds. When I cut the veins, she barely flinched. In my mind, I had my little list. Arrange weeds, white prints, place glass by bed. Wash and put away my glass. All the while, blood pumped from her veins into the bath water. I took the diaries, putting them in a carrier bag I had with me. I also took any letters from Howard and Sons I could find. I let myself out with the key, put it back under the flower pot. I burned the diaries in our incinerator and buried the ashes in the middle of the compost. How long did all this take? Several hours. It was very exhausting. Mrs. Arloff slept through it all. That day when she came back from shopping, I gave her a stiff whiskey laced with barbiturate. In any case, she was used to me pottering around in the garden while there was still light. How did you feel then? As I smelled the burning leather of her diaries, it felt good. I had destroyed Matilda and her poison. 
wish the rest of us could now keep some dignity. I don't want to speak to her. I think you must. Well, I'm not going back to her. Nobody can make you do anything you don't want to. Mummy, you took your time. I'm going to London. I have friends there. Here, everybody's against me. What do you want? What I wanted was justice. What I wanted was my due after all these years of suffering. What I've got is nothing. Sarah's going to make a trust for us. She's stolen you, too. She's taken my money and my daughter. <laughs> it's not like that. Isn't it? She wormed her way into Matilda's heart. Now she's worming her way into yours. I'm pregnant. You stupid little bitch. I'm going to have an abortion. You want me to blame myself? Want me to carry guilt, think I'm a bad mother? Don't want you to do anything at all. You've done enough. I just want to know someday why love died in our family. It didn't. How can something die that was never born? Please, Ruth, come with me. I need you. I can't. Please don't make me do this on my own. I can't. Well, go to hell. Love you. You look terrible. Well, you don't look too good yourself. Well, I'll leave you two little birds to batter each other to death. Now, shut up, Coop. We're all going inside to demolish the rest of Sarah's decent wine. So what? Is he free now? I want you to know this man is a hero. I will paint his portrait, his wife's portrait, his kids, his pets, for nothing, whenever and wherever he wants. So, clue of insanity, then? Joanna's withdrawn her statement, and Violet can't remember what she saw. Cooper did a little blackmail. God, Jack. Is this true? He's exaggerating. Stone bloody gospel. You don't deserve this. I know. And now, let's party. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm still on duty. I've got to get back. Gary Armour's expecting me. I have to take statements in Bournemouth this afternoon. Well, you'll be back for the sitting now, you promise? Yes. Goodbye, Sarah. I'll kiss you, but I'm covered with dirt. Look after Ruth and this idiot.
It was my birthday yesterday. Father says I am old enough, and that if Mother was alive, she would not mind. She knew about men's needs. I am not to tell anyone, or he will use the bridle over and over again. Mother should never have done such things. Then father would not do them to me.